Okay, J.P. Morgan holding its annual shareholders meeting today. America's biggest bank faced with a major challenge over the cancellation of conservative accounts. Here now is the man posing the big question, David Bonson, the Bonson Group founder, managing partner, and chief investment officer. David, always great to see you. You asked J.P. Morgan a pretty simple question. Will you, J.P. Morgan, look at whether or not you're discriminating against accounts based on religion or politics? That's the question you posed to them. How'd it go today? Well, their board of directors had recommended a unanimous vote against the resolution, which was not a surprise since they first tried to block the resolution from even being on the docket. I've been a shareholder in J.P. Morgan for 14 years. I personally own a sizable amount, and my firm owns $100 million of stock in J.P. Morgan, and we had every right to bring the resolution forward, and the SEC ruled in our favor. So the resolution obviously failed this morning with all the large institutional investors, the board of directors voting against it. But the huge victory that we achieved is that right now I think they are petrified, and I mean petrified, to uh, discriminate against accounts on the basis of religion or politics, which we uh, believe there's overwhelming evidence it has taken place. David, it's interesting. We also pivoting just a little bit. Heard from former Silicon Valley Bank CEO Greg Becker this morning. He's getting grilled on Capitol Hill. He was apologizing for the bank's devastating collapse, maintaining that regulators told him as recently as 2022 that everything was OK. Take a listen to what he had to say. I met personally with the San Francisco uh, Fed, members of the San Francisco Fed supervision team, um, roughly monthly, and in some months, months it was even, even more frequent than that. So the regulators tell him in 2022 everything's okay. He's meeting with these San Francisco Fed regulators monthly, sometimes more than monthly, and yet the bank still collapsed. What do you make of that? How does that change the way you look at some of these banks, maybe the, the small and, and more the regional ones, or those that maybe don't have appropriate chief risk officers? I really do believe there's more to the story than the internal risk failures at the bank and the regulatory failures, both of which are significant. But it was not just a private meeting that this gentleman had with the San Francisco regulator uh, proving what they were doing. The Federal Reserve itself, in a press conference, over and over again, was telling all of us interest rates will end the year at one and a half percent. And they ended the year at five percent. They more than tripled their own projections. So uh, Silicon Valley Bank, uh, the regional banks take on a deposit profile, take on a loan book, match their assets and liabilities, make hedging or non-hedging decisions based on what rate environments are projected from their own central bank, who then came in and overwhelmingly changed their own projection. There's a lot of failures here. Um, David, I'm not sure if you saw this article in the Wall Street Journal today. It was about Wells Fargo settling a class action lawsuit to shareholders paying about a billion dollars and essentially um, admitting to the fact that regulatory red flags were raised. The shareholders were saying you didn't respond fast enough. Is this what we're going to start to see? The shareholders really starting to dig into things as you are um, and trying to hold banks accountable? Well, I think a lot of shareholders are frustrated that they can't go after the regulators that were fining the shareholders effectively billions of dollars for all of this stuff going back to the uh, post-financial crisis. So now they've had to go to the banks themselves and say, what are you doing about it? What we have here is Wells Fargo was opening accounts without paperwork. It was totally inappropriate. And uh, now shareholders have gone after them for it. What I'm trying to do is say to J.P. Morgan, don't be a Wells Fargo. Don't act outside of your shareholders' best interest. They said today, Jamie Dimon said accurately, we have 50,000 accounts for different religious organizations out there. See, I don't think that Park Avenue was telling them to mm. close these different accounts. I think at a regional level, a local level, there's different people taking it upon themselves to be woke, to, to play that risk officer on behalf of the firm. That's what I'm asking. JP Morgan to stop. Those types of controls are what Wells Fargo didn't have. It's a different category, but it's the same principle. These are very large organizations. Something like my resolution today yeah. would have gone a long way to help them. Well, David Bosnick, congrats on your step one victory, and we always appreciate your thoughts on the banks and all things financial markets. Take care, sir.